Jetzt geht's los. Ja, mein Name ist Katja Riemann. Ich lebe in Berlin. Das Schöne an Berlin ist, dass man Berliner werden kann. Ich bin Wahlberliner, Wahlberlinerin. Und ich bin performative Künstlerin, so würde ich es äh, inzwischen nennen, gelernte Schauspielerin. Ich habe äh, zuerst Tanz studiert und dann in Hamburg. Und dann habe ich Schauspiel studiert und war dann viele Jahre am Theater fest engagiert, sowohl in München als auch in Berlin. Ähm, und habe dann bin schwanger geworden und habe dann das Theater verlassen und habe begonnen, mir sozusagen die Filmwelt zu erobern. Zu einem Zeitpunkt, als ich noch immer sehr jung war, gemeinsam mit Filmstudierenden, die ihre ersten Filme machten und wir voll Freude begannen, Filme zu drehen mit sehr wenig Budget. Und siehe da, das war dann in den 90er Jahren, viele dieser Filme sind sehr erfolgreich geworden kommerziell. Ja, in meiner Suche als Künstlerin habe ich eigentlich immer wieder, wie soll ich sagen, Herausforderungen gesucht aus letztlich Neugier und dem, dem Interesse, sich mit, mich mit etwas zu beschäftigen, was ich so noch nicht kenne und auf diverse Weise Geschichten zu erzählen. Und so kam es dann, nachdem wir einen Musikfilm gedreht hatten, der Bandits hieß, dass ich ein Angebot erhielt, eine, so ein Soloalbum zu machen. Und dann, nach zwei Jahren im Studio, war, dachte ich, ich bin ja aber eigentlich so ein Bühnenmensch. Und so habe ich eine Jazzband gegründet. Was soll ich euch noch erzählen? Es ist ja immer auch die Frage, was, was kommt auf dich zu? Und Warum kommt das jetzt gerade? Und ich glaube, dass alles auf seinen Platz fällt. Und manchmal muss man einfach nur erkennen, was begegnet mir da in dem Moment. Und so war das auch ganz sicherlich mit diesem Film, den ich jetzt drehen durfte für Arte. Aufgrund des Umstandes, dass mein, die Herausgabe meines Buches äh, Jeder hat niemand darf in die Corona-Zeit fiel und dann die Buchmesse ausfiel und das ganze äh, Lesereise in drei Ländern abgesagt wurde und die Literaturfestivals äh, ihre Touren schließen mussten etc., sagte dann mein, mein Lektor vom Fischer Verlag, er muss jetzt nachlegen, Katja. Und so äh, habe ich eine Idee gepitcht, ein Buch zu schreiben über Geflüchtetenlager. <lacht> So begann ich mit meiner ersten Reise im Sommer 20 nach Griechenland, nach Lesbos, nach Kios, nach Athen. Hatte das vorbereitet über ein paar Monate hinweg mit, äh, um mit diversen lokalen Nichtregierungsorganisationen in Kontakt zu kommen. Das war wirklich großartig. Und als ich zurückkam von dieser sehr intensiven Reise nach Deutschland, dachte ich, da gibt es eine Organisation, über die würde ich gerne den Film machen für Arte. Aus dem Grund, weil sie vielleicht eine Art Schnittstelle sein könnte zwischen meinen beiden Leidenschaften, dem der Filmschaffenden und der humanitär Arbeitenden. Und das ist eine Organisation, die eine Filmschule ist. Und der Titel dieses Films ist ein Zitat einer der Studierenden. Und der Film heißt dann Here We Are, eine Filmschule in Moria. Und den werden Sie jetzt sehen. We did a first pilot project on photography on media skills. Can I bring you the car? Yeah, yeah. Okay, see you I'll down. see you down there. It worked well, and then we decided, okay, let's create a project of it, a foundation, and let's make it our home. We started with something that was a bit more of an opportunity for young people here to spend three, four hours a day learning how to use their cell phones in a more professional way, look at the world a little differently, build a little community of media creators. We had everything? Yeah. And then we saw the potential for this to become something a bit more of a game-changing mm -hmm. school, Just something that could like attack a gap that was being ignored, which was secondary level education for people to have skills, to have training. Instead of bringing the crisis into the classroom, how could we bring that classroom to the crisis?
Lesbos, Griechenland. Seit 2018 gibt es in dem wohl berühmtesten geflüchteten Lager in Moria eine Filmschule, die Refocus Media Labs heißt. Im Sommer 2020 lernte ich sie kennen und kehrte zurück, um einen Film über sie zu drehen. My name is Sonia Nanjik. I'm Polish originally. My name is Douglas Herman, and I'm one of the co-founders of Refocus Media Labs. There's such a demand here for activity and for educational opportunities and for skill development, specifically because One Happy Family is this yes. amazing community that had lots of people mm -hmm. coming all the time. OHF oder One Happy Family ist ein Community Center, gegründet von Schweizern und Griechen, unter deren Dach diverse humanitäre Organisationen ihre Projekte untergebracht und begonnen haben. OHF hatte darüber hinaus Klassenräume gebaut, in denen vor allem Sprachunterricht angeboten wurde. Im März 2020 brannten alle neun Räume ab. I'm Nazarin, I'm 27 years old. My name is Yasser, I'm 17 years old from Afghanistan. I'm Milad, 22 years old. My name is Mahdi, I'm from Afghanistan, but I live in the, before the, in Iran. I'm Zahra, and uh, for three years I live here. My name is Yasser. I've been in this island for more than a year, and uh, here we are. The first semester we had one woman, one in the whole program, the rest was men. The next semester we had almost 50-50% ratio. <laughs> Für meine Zukunft wünsche ich mir, in einem Land zu leben, in dem meine Rechte geschützt sind. Women students I was working with, they are greater than us, actually, because they really they care about the details. They're good in making films, yeah. Gender was not an issue in our classes. The difference of cultures was not an issue in our classes. We would have 12 different nations represented in our earliest groups. As I was living in Afghanistan and Iran, it was a kind of far distant hope and wish for me to be one day a journalist. So I, I wasn't even thinking about this. We were living in a village. So and when I was 12, I left my family and I went to the city to continue my education, uh, my school education, also uh, learn English and computer. So when I went there, I had no other friends uh, but movies and games. For the first time I saw the poster, it was Rufika's classes, and I was very excited. I had a friend who were going there regularly, and he told me that there's a media classes. And we went there and we saw Douglas in the classes, and I asked him, can I come into the classes? I said, yes, but you have to come every day. I see some people that's with cameras and saying action. That was like, that was amazing. And I was like, is this a filmmaking class? And uh, I, I really wanted to you know, be there. I thought maybe they were journalists, but no, they were students of Free for Cast, so I, my journey started. <laughs> You know, most of the people watch movies as, as a entertainment, uh, but for me, cinema and movie, it's art, and it's something that I can relate to. Uh, I mean, before I started classes, I was uh, thinking that I'm a useless person, uh, but this class gave me hope, and uh, also it uh, instructed me in a way that I wanted. Photography is an immediate, gratifying experience. You see the moment, you capture it, you're like immediately a photographer. It doesn't, you press the button once and if it worked, you're like, wow. Video is a slow burn. Video takes time. So it, t it may take you a week, it could take you a year to make a great film. So how do you get them to the sense of becoming filmmakers, becoming journalists quickly? And then we realized that we needed to start creating like a tiered structure. One semester is four months. Then if you're still on the island and you still have the interest, you can go to the next level. Uh, and if you graduate from this one, you go to the next level. And every single level ends with a certificate. So that first four months of a program was always structured to get them to kind of taste a little bit of all of the different workflows for modern media communication. So where they could tell stories quickly, 
convey emotions quickly. So all of the earliest assignments were uh, one minute long films. We didn't want to always film about the camp and refugees and migrants all the time. So we thought maybe let's think about something new, something uh, which is not uh, related to mi migration and uh, refugees. I, I can't describe art, but what I can say, art is showing beautiness, something which is inside something. There are lots of movies who are just for entertainment and there is nothing really inside of it. There are also movies uh, who show you the art. And uh, in a movie, uh, there's also music. There's a cinematography. It's like painting. You, you include everything uh, to make this movie. When you show the beautiness of the world to people, it will automatically make them hopeful. We were working on our third film making. That's, uh, so something happened. It was lockdown, the burning of uh, OHF, and uh, we couldn't make it. One day, this place was, was so colorful. But now I see all the black things around. It's like uh, our world is dark. Here was my class for six months and I never changed, you know. I always had it here. Mm. It was the first wave of protests here on the island that ended up with fascist attack on refugees, on NGOs. Our school was burned um, and there's nothing left of it. Die Schule des Friedens gegründet im Februar 2017, war die Heimat für mehr als 4000 Kinder, die über diese Insel zogen. Wir werden die Schule wieder aufbauen. Gemeinsam. Das Licht wird stärker sein als die Dunkelheit. Even after the fire destroyed the school, the next day they were like, so are we gonna have class in Moria? And then came the first big lockdown. They decided to close the camps. And on March 22nd, 22,000 people were on a full lockdown for six months. We were allowed to go inside and, um, and teach. We're teaching next to Moria in, uh, in something that is literally a garage, a very expensive uh, and poor garage. So in that, in that clip, you have him on camera talking. So you can tell this story. There's the citizen journalism project, which is something on the side. So you can do this no matter which level you're attending at the moment, whether it is just photography, whether it is some writing, or whether it is uh, producing footage for international media, for BBC, for The Guardian, for Bloomberg, for uh, SBS Dateline. And basically, the students did all the work. People are scared from living in here. And when I am scared, it's... Uh, uh, bad things happen to me and my family. Every night uh, it's happening, fighting in this camp and people are being killed or stabbed. This virus is uh, not a joke. 14,000 people are living together. This virus might be a nightmare for all of us. But our program was never meant to be a documentary citizen journalism program. In the earliest stages of what we were doing, it was always meant to be a much more cathartic escape on the daily level. It was never meant to be, learn these skills and then go document the misery that you deal with every day. This has been forced upon us when the fascism started and then the lockdown happened and then they were stuck inside. And then the international media was locked out and they couldn't get access. And then all of a sudden, we had something that they wanted. The young media creators inside had something to contribute. They weren't being seen as victims anymore. On the island, Refocus is the only source that migrants can film for 
And that's what most of the networks wanted. They wanted to have, for example, pictures of inside of the camp. So they were getting in touch with Douglas, and Douglas uh, was uh, putting us in touch with those networks. So we had the chance to also express our work there and also, you know, give them something to publish. I wrote an article with, yeah, Al Jazeera. It was published in the Al Jazeera website. If they're not telling the world who they are and why they're doing what they're doing, then they're invisible. Sie wurden nicht unsichtbar. In der Nacht vom 8. auf den 9. September 2020 brannte das offizielle Rick und der sogenannte Dschungel Morias. Am nächsten Morgen löschte ein zweites Feuer alles übrig gebliebene endgültig aus. Die Zerstörung des Camps, in dem die meisten der Studierenden lebten, verdeutlichte die Situation auf Lesbos. Und sie selbst waren es, die sie sichtbar machten. Heimat ist die Landschaft, in der man nicht verschwinden würde. Sonst ist alle Landschaft darauf angelegt, uns zu verschlucken. Alle haben die Heimat mitgenommen, ins Grab, in die Ferne, ins Vergessen. Und wie viel kann man wegnehmen? Und man nennt es immer noch meine Heimat. This is your old school. Yes. Yeah. How's that? To be here again. <laughs> the second the fire happened, the whole world started paying attention to Lesbos again and to this issue. As you, people are hungry. Yeah, for sure, people are hungry. And uh, if they give them one answer, what's going to happen to them? Everybody can be calm. We had a fire that destroyed the school and closed the center. Then you have the lockdown. Then you have COVID is finally identified in the camp and they lock it down even harder. Then a fire destroys the camp. And now people are allowed out of this camp from certain hours to certain hours. OHF is able to open again and we're able to resume classes and now the new lockdown. So now we have to go online. So we got Mitalini in the house. We got Karatepe, we got the warehouse. We've got three spots in Karatepe. We've got Terni. Mobina's with us, cool. For us, we just keep finding new ways to deal with the new obstacles. So let's look at this first image. Can everyone see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What kind of a shot is this? It's a wide shot. Yeah. Where are we? We're in the desert, right? Yeah, desert. What about now? Close. Now we have a close shot, right? Now we have a close up of this guy. Teaching here combines people that think alike. We, we have the same values and we have the same goals. Mortiza, can you switch off the microphone? Nargis, also you hear me? Because I don't see you. So then we just start, because you all, you send me pictures today, so we can talk about them, is that okay? So listen, the reason why I show you the scene is that this is 31 shots, and all of it was done to introduce us to this guy. And so we will start with you, Nargis, then. I will show you all the pictures. So that's the first picture. Every story has basically three acts. This kind of act one, act two, act three. And we want to build up tension. Do you remember yesterday we talked about the Matrix? This big, big important scene is really about Neo meeting Morpheus. And the whole entire scene is really about two guys sitting across from each other on chairs. But they actually took 72 shots to tell that situation. With movies, I got to know how people behave in different situations, for example. In a survival situation, how would they behave? Would they betray another person just for their own life or just for food? Would they do it? And, and, and I, will, I witnessed that on, on, on my way from, for example, crossing the sea, that they, they would do it. Okay, so Farda Mabinamat, everybody. 
<laughs> Bye, everybody. Awesome. Douglas really cared about us. And exactly when Muriel burnt and uh, we were on the street, he stayed at night with us and slept with us next in, into the street on the roads and helping us. And he's really like a father. And how was your class today? The two were really sleeping. They would, like showed me a video. Very it happens that people get very depressed, especially now when they know that this lockdown will probably not end after three weeks. But you have to force yourself to move your brain. Mm -hmm. If you really feel like photography or filmmaking is not for you, you have to force yourself to find something to read, uh, to play mm -hmm. a game with somebody, because it's a matter for you of whether this camp will make you or break you. What now happened, they, like the police was coming in the tent to check if they have the mask. There's not enough mask. There's no anybody. way to do any laundry there, nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like women do it in the sea. Well, I would be happy to wash my underwear when I'm there, not thinking about the mask. First quarantine, it was this, this like trough of emotion and engagement. And we were feeling it too, so we started creating these little video clips. Go to a place where you feel calm, find something that makes you feel like somewhat happy. Someone posted yesterday on one of the Instagram stories about how they watched the sunrise. Mm. And then they realized after the sun rose that they were behind this barbed wire fence. Mm. You know, and like, but then they thought, well, yeah, I'm stuck behind this fence, but I still got the sunrise. If they don't come, they don't. We, we lost many students this okay. year. Our big challenge here is that we never know when people will leave the island. Everybody just wanted to leave this horrible place and have a chance somewhere else. And yes, they are moved somewhere, but they are cut off of every possible support help uh, that they had here on this island. Nachdem Moria abgebrannt war, lebten die Menschen zehn Tage auf der Straße zwischen Polizei, Militär, Journalisten, Tränengas und Humanitären bis sie laut UNHCR am 17. September begannen, in das neue Camp zu ziehen. 7500 Geflüchtete. Der Platz liegt am Meer, auf einem ehemaligen Truppenübungsplatz. Nach der Pandemie und dem Feuer kam nun, biblisch fast, die Flut. Auch im neuen Camp sind die Studierenden vor Ort und berichten live von der Situation, in der sie gezwungen sind zu leben. The this experience has has changed who we are. It's changed us deeply. And I can't imagine how it's changed them. And when we have deep conversations with them, they talk about what's been taken away from them, what's been lost, that they can never get back. So the only thing that we are motivated by right now is to provide some chance for something new to come, to come alive out of this rubble, which is their present. A lot of our students have the same aspirations that you have, to be on a stage, to be behind the camera, to be on the camera, to have their voice be heard, to literally sing. And they deserve that right to have it. Noch während unserer Dreharbeiten musste Douglas Griechenland und den Schengen-Raum verlassen. Auf Anordnung der Polizei. Sonja und Douglas werden nach Warschau gehen. Ins Exil, wie Doug sagt. Auf unbestimmte Zeit. When I became a director, we can make a movie out of it. Of course. Yeah, it's, a, it's not amazing making a movie with your teacher. This is a, a lifetime, this is a lifetime connection. Love you. Me too. And we'll see you very soon, okay? 
can't get for everything. Ha, 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 ha.